Before we start, let's take a look and have a look where Crete's located. Crete is the largest island in the Aegean, and it's the fifth largest island in the Mediterranean. It lies to the south of the Aegean Sea and forms a link between Europe, Asia, and Africa. And this geographical <coughs> position at the junction of major civilizations and cultural currents has greatly influenced Crete's history. I'm going to be talking about three major transition pit points in Crete and prehistory today. Firstly, the initial Neolithic at around 7000 BC. Secondly, the final Neolithic transition with the early Bronze Age between 3500 and 3000 BC. And thirdly, the pre-palatial transition to the first palace period at 2200 to 1950 BC. I plan to show that the emergence of the so-called Minoan civilization or palace culture is the result of both internal and external knowledge. That is, the coming together of socially more complex peoples from Anatolia and the Near East, the skills and resources from the Cycladic Islands, and the internal infra infrastructure created by the indigenous Cretan people. Although I won't be focusing upon individual components of eternal knowledge, I will be trying to identify the likely regions of origin for ancient knowledge coming to Crete at these important points in time. I've included a range of evidence for a number of, from a number of different experts in order to give as clear a uh, picture as possible um, of what appears to be happening. When most people think of Crete, they think of King Minos, the Minotaur, Theseus, and that Crete, like Sparta or Athens, is just another Greek kingdom. But who were the Cretans? And where did they come from? And where did the ancient knowledge that led to the flourishing culture of the Minoan palaces come from or originate? Up until recently, it was believed that the first visitors to Crete were Neolithic farmers arriving at about 7,000 BC. That is, until Thomas Strasser's team from Providence College on Rhode Island discovered some very exciting evidence during a survey in 2008-2009. Excavations in the Placius region of Crete revealed stone quartz made of quartz, sorry, stone tools made of quartz at least 130,000 years old. Even more intriguing, the style of the hand axes suggests that they could be anything up to 700,000 years old, as they resemble artifacts from the Aculean uh, period, which originated with pre-human pre, pre populations in Africa during the Lower Paleolithic. Aculean is the name given to an archaeological industry of stone tool manufacture that's associated with early humans during the Lower Paleolithic period, uh, about 1.7 million years ago. And this is sensational news, because Crete has been an island for over 5 million years. So these early visitors reached the island using sea craft capable of open sea navigation and multiple journeys this is really exciting because it pushes back previous evidence of seafaring in the Mediterranean by more than 100,000 years. Previous evidence was from the Frankfurt Cave um, region where obsidian from the island of Milos was found uh, at about 10,000 BC. So what does this show? Firstly, it, it creates the probability that, although not yet fully recognized in the archaeological record, there is likely to have been indigenous pre-Neolithic population on Crete. Secondly, it shows that from very early on, Crete is likely to have been accessible from both the eastern Mediterranean and also from North Africa. 
And this demonstrates that ancient knowledge on Crete goes back much further than the Neolithic. Returning to the Neolithic, Crete is significant because it's one of the earliest areas outside of the Near East to have had village farming. And it's also one of the earliest successful maritime transfers of a full farming economy. But what is the actual evidence on Crete for new migrants arriving and bringing their knowledge with them? What changes are showing up in the archaeological record? I've divided the evidence up into two groups. Evidence relating to people, that's DNA, relationship of DNA with linguistic evidence, and burial. And I've, on the other side, I've got evidence related to production. That's domesticated animals, wheat, and stone tools. So let's have a look at the DNA first. The results of a Y chromosome survey in a 2007 paper by Carter, King and others provide us with a means of tracking migration during the establishment of the first Neolithic farming communities on Crete. Um, the survey sampled 171 males from three areas in Greece uh, in villages near known, near, near initial, sorry, near, near known initial and early Neolithic sites. So central Macedonia, Thessaly and the Peloponnese. And it also sampled 193 adult males from four areas on Crete. <coughs> An analysis of the Y chromosome groups determined that samples taken from the males in the three areas on Greece showed a strong affinity to data from the Balkans. While the samples from those four areas on Crete showed an affinity with central and Mediterranean Anatolia. So the Y chromosome group showing up in Thessaly and Macedonia is, is scarce on Crete. And the group showing up on Crete is scarce on the Greek mainland. And this evidence is important as it clearly separates migrants on Crete at this time, at this moment in time, from those on mainland Greece. The genetic data from, from this survey, it clearly supports Arthur Evans and others' long-held theory that Crete's colonists came from Anatolia specifically from those sites where the well no, sorry those areas where the well known neolithic sites of Azikli Huic, Chattel Huic, Hasilar on region T7 shown on the, this map here and Yumuk Tepe near Mersin and Tarsus that's region T6 on the slide and what's very interesting for us here today is that this also supports David Rowell's belief that the Cretans, or Cretine, may, also, may, may, all, may have come from a region known as the Kabur Triangle in northwest Syria. Although the DNA evidence relates to a much earlier time than when the first representations of ball leaping from Crete or Syria appear, region T6 places as firmly in the area that David Rolls suggests that ball leaping originated. The different patterns of dispersal of groups J2A M410 and J2B M12 to Crete and Southern Europe respectively broadly supports Colin Renfrew's model that claims an early split of Anatolian languages from the rest of Indo-European languages at around 7,000 BC. So put simply, the group arriving in Crete would have spoken a different language from the group, arri uh, group arriving on the Greek mainland. <laughs> 